In this particular problem, we're actually going to look at the heat change involved in an everyday occurrence. In this case, the problem says how much heat in kilojoules is required to raise the temperature of 237 grams of cold water from 4.0 degrees Celsius to 37.0 degrees Celsius. Why is this a common everyday occurrence? Well, 237 grams of water is about one cup or eight ounces, which is the size of one small drinking glass. Additionally, water at 4.0 degrees Celsius has likely come from the refrigerator because that tends to be about the temperature that most refrigerators actually store their food or contents. And 37.0 degrees Celsius is human body temperature. So effectively, this question is asking, how much heat is my body going to have to transfer into that cold glass of water I just drank out of the fridge so that cold water is no longer sitting in my stomach at four degrees Celsius, but has now warmed up to room, oh, sorry, body temperature. So how we're gonna solve this problem is through the idea of heat capacity. In this case, the heat for the water is going to depend on three things. The amount of water, in this case we're going to say the mass, the specific heat capacity. We're going to use the specific heat capacity since we're measuring the amount in mass. If I was measuring the amount in moles, I would use the molar heat capacity. And then that is going to be multiplied by the change in temperature. So if I want to continue on with this, well, my Q water is going to equal that 237 grams multiplied by the specific heat capacity of water, which you would need to look up for this problem. But frankly, it's a number that is going to be used a fair bit. So you might get used to remembering it 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And all of this needs to be multiplied by that temperature change where temperature or more specifically temperature changes are always the final temperature minus the initial. Whenever we talk about change, it's where we've ended up compared to where we started. We're ending up at 37.0 degrees Celsius and we're starting from 4.0 degrees Celsius. This is very important in terms of figuring out the sign of what's happening for the heat. So in this case, that is going to be 37.0 degrees Celsius minus 4.0 degrees Celsius. With this, we can continue our calculation. Q water is 237 grams times 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And our temperature change in this case is plus 33.0 degrees Celsius. Might as well make a note here. Notice how this temperature change is given in degrees Celsius. We would have seen for the ideal gas law that we needed temperatures to be in Kelvin for the ideal gas law to work. Yet here, we're dealing with temperatures in degrees Celsius. Well, why can we do that? Well, again, this is not a temperature measurement, it's a change in temperature measurement, and that's what's making all the difference here. We would have seen that the Kelvin temperature scale and the degree Celsius temperature scale are effectively the same size of units. The degree sizes are the same. The only difference is what we call the zero temperature. In the Celsius scale, it's the freezing point of water, zero degrees Celsius. We would have seen from the ideal gas law after extrapolating behavior that the actual lowest possible temperature in the universe is 273.15 degrees below the freezing point of water or minus 230, uh, sorry, 273.15 degrees Celsius. We call that absolute zero or zero Kelvin. But the key is this, since the size of the degrees are the same, then the temperature change is going to be the same. It's going to be 33 degrees whether we measure this in Kelvin or degrees Celsius. So when you see temperature 
changes in chemistry, you can use degrees Celsius. You don't need to convert to Kelvin. If you do convert to Kelvin, you're just going to find that the conversion factors of adding 273.15 are going to cancel out in the, in the subtraction. And that's why that works. But otherwise, we have our problem set up. Now we just need to calculate our answer. Handy dandy calculator. In this case, it's my phone. So let's do some quick numbers here. 237 times the 4.184 times the 33 is going to give me, let's just write down a whole bunch of numbers here and worry about sig figs afterwards, 32723. 32,732. Well, let's keep track of what's going on with our units. Here we have gram units, the mass of our water, but we see our heat capacity has per gram units in there that are going to cancel out. We also have our per degree Celsius units in here in that specific heat capacity and our degree Celsius units here in our temperature change. So the only unit we have left is joules, which means this is in joules. Now, of course, I can take that and say, well, there's one kilojoule per 1,000 joules. And effectively, what that's going to give me is 32.7 kilojoules. Again, this joules will cancel out that one. That's leaving us there. And you'll notice that I've now taken it down to three sig figs because effectively we see our mass has three sig figs, our temperature change has three sig figs, and our heat capacity has four. So we have to take it down to three because of the multiplication that's involved in there. I'm going to emphasize here that the sign is positive. The heat that goes into the water as we raise its temperature, yeah, that's a positive thing. Energy is entering the water as it heats up in our stomach to go from 4 degrees to 37. If the water were somehow cooling down in our body, if I drank a cup of hot tea and looked at how it has to cool down in my stomach, then we would see a negative heat for the water because our temperature change for the water would be negative in that case because our final temperature would be lower than the initial temperature. Always try and pay attention to the signs in your problems, especially when it comes to thermodynamics, because while many of these calculations are actually fairly straightforward, it is the sign that often leads to the wrong answer.